Gran Turismo first launched, my son Alex here was eight years old and we used to play it together. He's now a professional racing driver and it's a great testament to the history, heritage and success of this video game that we can be here to help launch Gran Turismo Sport 20 years later. Okay, so we're going to do a time trial around Brands Hatch GP. I need you to help me pick a car. Well, so is the fastest car. The, the fastest, fastest, the fastest car. I don't play this so much now you've cleared off and left us at home. <laughs> um, but the first thing that strikes me is the graphics. Oh, the graphics. The, uh, detail is incredible. I really think these guys were the first to recognise that that really matters as much as the dynamics of the car because how much on a racetrack do you look for that little tuft of grass or that little piece reference of white point. line reference point? You can take from these games whatever it is, whatever your automotive passion is. Gran Turismo supplies it. Because the dynamics are so real, then you know that feel is there to do anything you could do in real life. You, you must have been around this place plenty. What, what are your memories from, uh, from the track? Well, I raced there from the early days when I was a kid. Yeah. I drove in the last Grand Prix there in F1, yeah. 1986, finished fifth in a Tyrrell. And in 88, won the 1000K race there for Jaguar in a Group C sports car. You can imagine the big Venturi and how much downforce that got and how quick it was through Paddock Hill Bend. So we've both worked with GT Academy racing drivers uh, who've come from Gran Turismo and become pros. The FIA are now sanctioning eSports series. What, what do you think of that? I think it's great because instead of just relentlessly racing the shadow car or yourself, uh, you can go on into a, a bona fide championship. You might end up on stage picking up your trophy with the World Rally Champion and the Formula One World Champion. And there are barriers to entry, of course, financial or otherwise, in motorsport, and it's great that Gran Turismo, along with uh, the FIA, are, are working to remove those. I think it's a really exciting time for, for esports and an exciting development for motorsport. Back in the day, I'd do a time, wouldn't I? And then you'd do a time afterwards. Yeah. And uh, it would be like a little kind of benchmark game, and you always used to beat me, and it used to annoy me. Oh, I think you, used you didn't to beat used to beat me, me quite so <laughs> dirty. Hold on, I'll just stop over here and wait for you, shall I? <laughs> right, let's see how quick you are then. So here we go in VR mode. So what's the difference then? How can you? Oh, you it's it's slightly strange for the. Wow, that's realistic. Absolutely realistic. You, you really get the sensation of being inside the car. I now realise that's one of the key differences between a simulation where the camera is in a static position. I look at me watch him as I go by, that's incredible. <laughs> Having the freedom to look wherever I want, of course you never do when the camera is static. And it's something you always do in a race car in reality. It's realistic, isn't it? It's unbelievable. Absolutely, yeah. See, I find it a lot easier to drive the car because this, this oh, makes me feel like I'm in it. Well, I really enjoyed that. It's motivated me to get the PS4, the wheel, the seat, the VR headset and get going again. Yeah, we've seen the, the step forward in the game, we've seen the, the VR functionality and uh, I'm really excited for the release of GT Sport. For the players.